Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Um, it's a real pleasure to be again in a real conference. And I, uh, as in old time, and I hope this will continue and only wish next time we will be able to, to be here without masks. Um, so this is a joint work with uh, uh, Ed Karasevich, who is here, uh, and uh, Fan Gao, who is also participating on Zoom. Um, well, a couple of words, uh, uh, Gordon. Uh, uh, I started reading Gordon's papers uh, before we, we, we met back in 2001. And it was really, uh, it, was, it was a challenge for me. I was a fresh postdoc uh, because um, every page was packed with uh, original ideals. And it's not like a paper which you go through lightly. Um, uh, and later we, 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 we met and met on many occasions. And uh, I like him personally very much and, uh, as a person, I mean, and also appreciate very much uh, his mathematics. So uh, uh, happy birthday. Um, and uh, uh, in some sense, this work goes uh, Gordon in uh, several ways. So for me personally, it began when I uh, read his uh, very nice short note, uh, uh, A Tale of uh, Two Heke, Heke Algebra, which I really recommend. Uh, and uh, later we, we started to work on this project with uh, Ed Karasevich uh, when he was a postdoctoral uh, fellow in our university and now he continues to be uh, uh, in uh, Utah and on the way uh, we've got uh, from Gordon many uh, good advices. So uh, it uh, has, uh, 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 this story uh, is not about minimal representation of theta correspondence, but it still uh, uh, resonates very much with uh, Gordon's uh, work, uh, who did uh, some pioneering, uh, uh, wrote some pioneering papers on uh, um, uh, uh, algebra of uh, metaplectic uh, of uh, covering groups. So this is about Gelfand the Grave representation for covering groups. But before uh, starting with covering groups, I'll uh, do some warm up with uh, linear uh, groups uh, and we'll uh, uh, introduce uh, an algebra which is not as well known as uh, Iva Horihek algebra and try to convince you that this is a, a very useful algebra to, to look at. So let us start with some notations. Uh, F uh, is standard local local non-Archimedean field with ring of integers, uh, maximal ideal, and uh, the residue field of characteristic P. Uh, the groups over finite field will come in, so um, this will be this Q is uh, important. Uh, G is as a group of F points of a reductive split linear group uh, with uh, Borel and opposite Borel, uh, and of course a vial group. Now we denote by Y co-character lattice. This uh, letter will be repeated many times. So this one is better to remember. Uh, we have a root system and a set of simple roots. Uh, now we fix uh, a non-degenerate character uh, of uh, opposite uh, radical of, of the unipotent uh, of conductor P. That's uh, kind of important. Uh, it's non-degenerate, meaning that uh, its restriction to every root space is uh, non-trivial, but uh, more precisely, it will be non-trivial on uh, integer points while being trivial when you uh, restrict it to the maximal uh, ideal for every negative simple root. Okay, uh, now for any sub subgroup H or just group H, uh, uh, the, we denote by H, uh, under bar the, the group of uh, FQ points of H. So this is a finite group. And now K is a maximal uh, compact group. We have a, a projection map from uh, G of O to uh, G of FQ. And we define uh, two subgroups. One is the Ivahori subgroup. It is a inverse image of uh, uh, Borel as usual. And it's pro P unipotent radical, which will play a essential role in, in this whole story. I want this is, will be the inverse image of the unipotent radical of the Borel. And the quotient is, of course, uh, uh, the finite uh, uh, torus over the finite. Okay. 
So, uh, so now let's, uh, we are still in the uh, uh, linear groups, okay? Uh, and the uh, gelfand graf representation is, uh, will be just an compact induced uh, representations from U, uh, well, opposite uh, uh, to G with, with a non-degenerate character. And the main, uh, 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 so it, it enjoys the multiplicity one property. And this is an old theorem of Rodier Schalaika that every uh, generic representation is a quotient of this V with multiplicity one, or in other words, uh, uh, the, for any generic representation, well, any representation, uh, the home of pi into V dual, which is just the non-compact uh, induced, uh, the big induced space is at most one, okay? Um, so this can be restated at least for, for the finite field version, is that the uh, endomorphism of, uh, uh, algebra of uh, of this space is commutative, okay? And this uh, uh, can be extended to uh, p-adic fields. And in fact, besides uh, being commutative, it has actual uh, meaning, a deep meaning. And this is a theorem of uh, Bushnell and Henyar of uh, 2003, that uh, if you fix a generic bursting class, so a pair of, uh, Levy and uh, um, supercuspidal uh, generic representation. Uh, and we look at the uh, projection of the gelfand graf representation to this uh, uh, corresponding component. So the, the uh, category of uh, smooth representation breaks in a sum according to Burson components. And the endomorphism of uh, the, the piece of, of V of the gelfand graf representation correspond to S is in fact isomorphic to the Bernstein center of the, uh, uh, of the corresponding piece of the category, okay? So this means that it's uh, pretty interesting to find out what uh, to describe uh, the, the space Vs for different Bernstein classes. And we go on to with the simplest, uh, uh, Bernstein classes uh, possible. Well, sorry. Uh, well, uh, let us fix, uh, uh, look at the Bernstein classes of the type uh, T and the character of depth zero. So what's depth zero? We start with the character, um, uh, character of finite torus, okay? And we know that it can, this character can be lifted two character of T and also two character of the Ivahori subgroup, right? Because uh, uh, we have seen that I mod uh, its prop unipod neuradical is uh, TQ. So we both uh, denote those characters by views of notation also by chi, okay? So let us look at the uh, Bernstein component T chi, okay? And uh, this Bernstein class is described, uh, it has a type Corresponding to him, meaning uh, that uh, we can consider a, a kind of slight generalization of the hori hecker algebras, um, algebra of uh, functions of uh, compact support on G mod I mod I, which are both chi invariant with respect to this I. Okay, and then it is known that this piece, that these representations are in fact module, uh, I mean, the corresponding uh, piece of the category is. Uh, isomorphic to the modules uh, of uh, H uh, of this algebra, H I chi, by taking any representation and looking on its uh, isotypic component, I chi vectors. So now the, the natural question uh, is how to describe this V I chi as uh, H I chi module in order to later to understand its uh, endomorphism, let us first see what this module is. So for example, uh, the result which, uh, um, well, I, I guess uh, well, it was uh, uh, written in a recent paper of, of uh, Chen and Seven. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, that uh, if you take chi to be trivial character, then you describe this, this theory has already appeared here in, in Chen's talk, uh, can be written as a, a tensor product as an induced module. It's a tensor product of uh, HI 
uh, over the finite Hecke algebra, which is uh, defined uh, uh, on the slide, uh, with a one-dimensional sign representation, right? Um, and uh, in particular, uh, the map from HI to VI can be attained by uh, the surjective map from HI uh, to VI can be attained by averaging on the <coughs> left over uh, unipotent radical with uh, uh, character. Okay, uh, but now so so th th quite similar result exists. Uh, for uh, arbitrary chi, I will come to this in a moment. Um, but uh, it's just to capture, to answer uh, for, uh, to, uh, this, to get this description of vi chi all at once, we do it in stages. We first try to uh, describe the model vi1, okay? So this is like uh, part of, uh, of I, and then later uh, uh, uniformly get the description of V I chi. Okay, so I uh, remind that I one is uh, um, uh, is uh, is a proper unipotent uh, uh, of the Ivahori. Okay, so here's the theorem, uh, which is uh, just its proof is just a variation of, of uh, basically the same idea of the proof of Chen and Savin, that uh, uh, so so let's just emphasize this vi1 is a module over a new algebra, a different algebra uh, of i1 invariant by invariant function. So this, uh, this algebra is larger than the ivahori hecke algebra. Um, now, uh, actually it has been studied before. It has a name of that uh, sometimes is called tame ivahori hecke algebra, has been studied by, by Marie-France Venera and also by Flickr. Um, uh, so it has a kind of similar uh, description like ivahori, sort of ivahori Matsumoto presentation and sort of uh, Burson presentation. Uh, in any case, uh, uh, more or less with the same uh, tools, uh, it's possible to achieve uh, the following description. The, the space Gelfen I1 fixed vectors of Gelfen Grave is uh, a tensor product uh, as a module over H is uh, the following thing. You first take uh, the space uh, V0 which is a kind of gelfand Greif representation over finite field, uh, as you see in induction from a character. And now you take u uh, under bar uh, fixed point, uh, on which acts uh, 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 group, uh, not group algebra, but uh, the space of by u invariant point on this finite group, okay, which is uh, naturally isomorphic to the uh, finite uh, Hecke algebra in this tame Evahori Hecke algebra, so just functions supported on K. Okay, so uh, that's that's the theorem. And now, uh, as a corollary, uh, so uh, you, if you know this v, VI1, um, you can just uh, obtain VI chi by uh, averaging this, uh, applying to this VI1. Uh, and an element uh, which will be called C of chi through the uh, lecture. C of chi is just idempotent element corresponding to the character chi. So I remind you that chi was a character of the uh, phi, of the torus of the finite field. Uh, you can average over, uh, uh, take the corresponding uh, idempotent. Uh, it lives in uh, uh, in uh, group algebra of T, which can be considered as a sub uh, algebra inside uh, this H zero thing, which itself is subalgebra of H. So, uh, um, and uh, it is module over uh, this H averaged by both sides. I mean, when you when you take this tame algebra H and average it on both sides with C of chi, you get the algebra. Uh, corresponding to H A chi. In particular, if chi is trivial, then multiplying of CO1 of both sides, you recover Ivahori Hecke algebra. 
Okay. Well, uh, now we want to describe. Uh, this is still not a, a so good description of the VIK. Uh, I want to decompose it further. For this, I want to explore uh, the uh, uh, the module V zero. Okay. So uh, here is a story about gelfand graf representation V zero over finite field. Uh, okay. Now, uh, by restriction of function, it is isomorphic to the uh, uh, to uh, just a group algebra of T, okay? Uh, and uh, since C of T is spanned by those E, the important we consider for a second is uh, the important as an as C of chi as an element of V0, okay? Uh, now we have decomposition of this uh, space V0, uh, which is, as I said, isomorphic to C of T. Uh, into number of uh, W orbits of the characters in this home space. Okay, we have uh, all the characters of the uh, of the torus of the finite field W uh, X on them. Naturally, there are orbits. Okay, uh, each orbit uh, we call uh, the corresponding orbit is called V O, and then the proposition is that. Uh, uh, so, so this V0 is, after all, a sum over V corresponding to orbit, and each orbit as an H0 module can be written as, again, a tensor product uh, of H0 with over uh, 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 subalgebra corresponding to uh, chi, okay? Uh, with some finite dimensional representation. This finite dimensional representation, uh, sorry, one dimensional representation. It, uh, uh, it, it is defined in terms of, uh, uh, it in, its definition involves Gauss sums. Okay, so, uh, so hence uh, the corollary is that this VI1 being a tensor product breaks into, uh, uh, into a sum over the orbits and uh, 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 taking further uh, um, averaging of chi, we get description of this vi chi to be, um, uh, to describe it as again a tensor product of the algebra h i chi with some one dimensional representation over uh, Subalgebra, uh, subalgebra of the finite Hecke algebra. So this result is not new. Uh, it, uh, it has been an even bigger generality obtained uh, uh, by Mifra and Patnaik. Uh, okay, I just uh, demonstrated the usefulness of this uh, H uh, of this tame Hecke algebra. Okay, so now after this warm up, we uh, shall go to covering groups. Okay, where actually while uh, this this algebra was useful in uh, in algebraic group in covering group is just becomes indispensable as far as we see. Uh, okay, now we we are we go to covering group. So we start with the algebraic group, and uh, there is a um, conceptual way to produce a, a big class of covering uh, topological extensions of of G. Um, uh, called this class is called Brilins Brilinski Dilin covering. Okay, and for uh, when uh, uh, the field contains nth root of unity, we have uh, such a topological central extensions. So uh, I will not tell the whole, I mean, they uh, and those extensions are parameterized by certain. Um, data, quadratic forms, and uh, more. I will uh, say this in a minute. Uh, but uh, now my goal is to define what the um, gelfand graf representation is. So we fix uh, uh, an embedding of this group of unity, epsilon, and uh, uh, into complex numbers. Now we know that the unipotent uh, group uh, splits canonically. Uh, in in covering, and we look at the tame uh, coverings so that the maximal compact subgroup also uh, splits uh, in a particular all the all its uh, we fix this splitting. It is not unique, but in particular this gives splitting of uh, Ivahori and Propi uh, Ivahori subgroup and uh, all this. Okay, so Gelfand-Graf representation is nothing but uh, this uh, compact induction. 
uh, okay, uh, we, we induced from mu n, the center uh, of the discovery, in, which is contained in the center times u. Uh, on mu is we put the character epsilon and on u the same character psi. Okay, and now we want to determine vi as a hi module. Okay, so the problem that uh, unlike in the uh, covering uh, uh, case, um, the uh, natural map from hi to vi, which would be just averaging over the unipotent uh, uh, subgroup on the left with a character, it's no more surjective. And the reason is that, that uh, there is a severe restriction on the elements of hi, uh, uh, which, which uh, um, uh, classes can be um, uh, a support of uh, elements in HI uh, in the covering uh, case uh, in the following sense. So let me say a little bit about the structure of this HI. Uh, now the group uh, G bar, it depends on the uh, on certain uh, W invariant quadratic form of uh, co-character lattice. Uh, Okay, uh, z-valued one, uh, as I say, w invariant, and uh, corresponds, uh, 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 there is corresponding bilinear form, bq, and uh, this defines a so-called modified uh, co-character lattice corresponding to this uh, uh, covering, uh, and it is defined as uh, intersection of y and uh, n times y dual, where dual is taken with respect to this bilinear uh, subgroup. So uh, if you haven't seen that before, never mind. It's just a, a sub lattice of a finite um, index. Um, and uh, now this algebra HI contains uh, similar to, um, uh, to the uh, linear case, it has a, a finite Hecke algebra, okay, which functions which are supported on K. Here is just the same because K is split. And the commutative algebra, but unlike, uh, which is analog of Bernstein algebra, but unlike uh, uh, in linear case, it is uh, no longer isomorphic to C of Y, but C of this smaller uh, lattice, okay? HI is still isomorphic uh, as a vector spaces to the tensor product. Okay, so uh, then uh, the reason that the commutative algebra is uh, sort of smaller than it's in linear case, this is the reason why uh, the algebra uh, H, okay, uh, which is uh, uh, analog of tame algebra becomes uh, very handy. Okay, so um, the, the first part in our project we had to uh, can, uh, to uh, describe the structure of this group, we can construct the analogs of the Ivahori Matsumoto presentation and Bernstein presentation. There is a, the analog of this uh, Bernstein algebra is no longer uh, commutative, unlike in uh, uh, linear case, uh, for the same reason that um, the torus is not commutative in the, uh, the in the covering case. Okay. But now let us talk a little bit about the decomposition of uh, uh, the space uh, VI. So as before, we first want to, uh, so V, I remind you, V is still the Gelfand-Greif representation. Um, so we first determine what is VI1, uh, meaning I1 fixed vectors of uh, V. And it turns out that basically by the same argument, it just has the same structure. Uh, as uh, uh, as before, and uh, V0 here is a gelfand Graf representation over finite field, and H0 is exactly as in the linear case. So since V0 doesn't have to do anything with covering, it's a gelfand Graf representation of the uh, finite field. Uh, so it still breaks over the orbits, okay? So I remind you that in linear case, when we further average over uh, C of chi, or in this case, we'll be interesting only in C of one, uh, which will uh, uh, get us uh, the Ivahori fixed vectors. We every time pick just a single orbit of the um, of those characters. All right, here the situation is a little bit more difficult, uh, and uh, averaging over I will bring us 
m m more orbits. So which orbit it will be bring? Here is a special uh, feature of covering cases. Uh, so after fixing a section uh, of uh, for any for any core character uh, for of core uh, for any uh, core character to the to the torus. Okay, it's possible to define a, a W equivalent injective map of this um, quotient y by y bar, which is finite into the set of the characters, okay? The, the definition is, uh, is using the, um, uh, the commutator between, uh, 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 and the, this character is, uh, know that this, uh, these characters are mu n valued. So there, here is an interplay between n and q. So a priori uh, uh, characters of, from t bar to c star are, mu q minus one valued, all right? Uh, but uh, n divides q minus one, so we have fewer characters. Uh, okay, and then uh, um, the, the corollary, uh, the, which we have, I mean, it's not immediately transparent, but uh, that uh, when we um, average over C1, meaning taking I fixed vectors, Okay, we not uh, uh, end up with just one orbit, but a number of orbit. Okay, not all of them, some of them. Which one? Exactly those orbits uh, in uh, y mod y bar, uh, which um, uh, which are uh, contained in the image. Okay, so now uh, our next question is: What's the structure of each summand is? H I module. So so far we just uh, has written it as a, a certain tensor product and then averaging. Now we want to actually uh, write it as H I module. Uh, sorry, as a tensor product over H I module. But now um, uh, we can do it so far in uh, uh, in some. Um, uh, so in, in fact, this is not always true that this piece is, uh, um, uh, can be written as a, a tensor product of HI with a subgroup of the finite Hecke algebra. So now we put certain condition, which is, uh, I will say in a minute when it is satisfied. So um, we say that the orbit in, so we're looking at the set of W orbits in, on this finite, uh, finite set, Y mod Y bar, okay? Uh, we say that on orbit splits, if we have, uh, can embed it into, in W equivariant, equivariant way into Y, okay? In this case, the stabilizer of, uh, of this element in the image, uh, we denote it by, by uh, Wy, it is generated by uh, simple reflections. Uh, so, uh, and uh, the theorem that we got so far is that if there, if, uh, there exists a splitting, so pick an orbit, okay, we want to describe this piece uh, uh, VO tensor product HCO1 over H0. I remind that CO1 is just uh, multiplying by a characteristic function of the Ivahori subgroup. Uh, it does have a structure of, uh, uh, as we expect, HI uh, tensor product with a sign over uh, HY, uh, uh, where HY is uh, spanned by uh, elements in the stabilizer. Okay, uh, so so we know that this. Uh, uh, this uh, way that it can be written in the case the, that O is splitting, and if there is no splitting, the structure is somehow more involved. Okay, uh, so it's uh, it's very important that this in this case this module is projective module, and hence home from it will be an exact functor. So this will be uh, very important for applications. Okay, so now let me say a little bit uh, when this condition hold, which condition, the condition of existence of, so which orbit actually split. Or more, even more, I'm interested in describing 
uh, groups uh, for which covering for which all the orbits split. Okay, so here is a new name. The cover is called Oasitic. Uh, so there, there is a big, many classes going around in numerous works on, on covering groups, uh, uh, which uh, enjoy uh, better property than others. Uh, so here is yet another uh, one, which is even stronger than many of those. Uh, it is some combinatorial condition, as you see. So uh, you look at the uh, highest root, uh, highest core root, and uh, the so this is some condition on n. N should avoid certain uh, um, uh, certain uh, prime uh, uh, factors. So and uh, it turns out that this is based on the results of Eric Sommers and. Uh, that uh, if you have a OZT cover, okay, of so here are more conditions, some simple, simply connected group, and assume that uh, uh, Q of alpha check is one for all short roots. Like if if the uh, root system is irreducible, it just means for the un for any short root it is one. Uh, then every orbit splits. Okay, so and this happens pretty often. So here there are. You just uh, 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 written uh, for which uh, uh, which factors we have to avoid for all the group to have this uh, cover or zitic. Uh, I think alpha check is short. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, so for, uh, uh, for all these groups, in particular, we have that, uh, let me, yeah, be, get back to theorem, yeah, that uh, the uh, VI uh, breaks into some of uh, uh, modules over, uh, I mean, some over certain orbits, okay? Uh, and uh, each summon uh, has uh, the, the form HI uh, tensor product with the um, over subalgebra of finite subalgebra with a sign uh, representation. Okay. So now I'm going to talk a little bit of applications of, of this result. So there are going to be four applications. Hope have time for those. So uh, first of all, um, it is uh, uh, some many, I mean, some five or seven years ago, I already don't remember. Chinten Ganels has uh, in uh, their pursuit for um, uh, study of uh, multiple Dirichlet series, they have defined a metaplectic, or something that which they call metaplectic action of W on the space of rational functions of Y. So this is far from. Uh, 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 usual uh, action. It's quite intricate action, and they could show that this is an action only using uh, computer computations. And uh, but uh, this action has been very useful. It, there was later found its relation to covering groups. So in the recent paper of Sahi Stockman and uh, Venkatas Waran, uh, they have defined of action of H I on the group algebra of this uh, of this less, uh, lattice okay and uh, well in hi uh, uh, or at least in localized hi if you uh, if you allow to divide by elements on the, in the uh, bursting commutative subalgebra you have a, a subalgebra isomorphic to uh, sub uh, Group algebra of W, okay, defined by intertwining operators, uh, and uh, so they have defined an action of H I on C O Y, also quite non-trivial action, uh, for which uh, Chintagannel's action follows by localization. Okay, they uh, write formulas for the action of generators and the proof that this is indeed an action is quite involved. Uh, but we have rediscovered this action by just. Uh, identifying this COY with the space VI, where uh, V is a uh, uh, Gelfand uh, Graf representation. And then on this HI acts naturally. Also, the formulas are 
bit involved, but they coincide with the formulas that uh, uh, that were written in this SSV paper. Okay, uh, so um, uh, and the reason for v VI can be identified with uh, COY through since uh, uh, considering as a module of the over this commutative algebra, it's a free module of the rank uh, index of Y bar in Y. Okay, so to be honest, uh, SSV work a little bit in more generic uh, uh, way. They define their action on C of P, where P is a co weight lattice. Okay, so there is, a, we expect that uh, the other pieces uh, um, uh, of, uh, of this action on the cosets of uh, co character lattice inside co weight lattice will correspond to the Gelfand Graf representations of different conductors. Uh, okay, uh, we have, uh, uh, so that was first application. And now I will tell several applications for, of this uh, uh, theorem for uh, descriptions of uh, Whittaker um, uh, modules of um, uh, unramified principle uh, series of pieces of unramified principle series. So let me recall the settings, the, the cover, the Torus of the covering group is not commutative. It contains a center, uh, and uh, it contains some intermediate uh, maximal uh, abelian subgroup, which can be taken as u of t times t of o. Okay, so starting with any unramified character of the center, uh, by extension e to this maximal uh, abelian subgroup, uh, we define, uh, I mean, define an unramified principle. Uh, series. Okay, so now we want to know what is, I mean, we, we want to uh, study the space of Whittaker functionals on this uh, principal series. So normally uh, it is one, I mean, in the linear case, it's one dimensional. This is no longer true uh, for covering groups. For covering groups, the, uh, the uniqueness of uh, the, this multiplicity one formula fails. And uh, let us define the space of Whittaker functionals to be just home um, uh, of um, uh, from this uh, home uh, from V to I of chi, which is since chi is uh, unramified, is just isomorphic to home over H I of. Uh, I fixed vectors to I fixed vectors of I of chi. And since VI enjoys this decomposition over the orbits, we can write uh, these spaces as sum over corresponding orbits. Okay. Um, now, for any chi, the dimension of the total Whittaker space is no longer one, but equals to the index of Y bar in Y. But now, uh, when i chi is reducible, this means that there are many pieces, and uh, their sum should sum up to y over y bar. So we are interested to find out what are uh, dimension of uh, uh, of uh, uh, each piece. Okay, and we uh, uh, look for two cases. First case is regular unramified. Uh, series, okay. So we assume that chi is a regular character, and we put some conditions that uh, which has to do with the uh, uh, poles of uh, intertwining operators uh, in uh, uh, that uh, the set of certain special roots, right, uh, is, is sits in simple root. So, uh, in this case, uh, we know that uh, yet by by the um, uh, argument similar to Rodier that uh, the semi that I of chi, uh, its semi simplification is uh, sum over uh, uh, representations parameterized by uh, subset of, of this special set f of chi. Uh, of course, sometimes the set is empty, so then the representation is irreducible. Nothing to do in this case. But uh, assume the set is non empty. Uh, so each piece is basically uh, uh, fixed by its uh, um, uh, by its uh, uh, Jacquet functors. Okay, so for example, if this set is everything, then uh, uh, we get just the corresponding piece as a minimal representation. Okay, 
So then we, we, we will compute the dimension of every piece in the following way. We look at the permutation representation of W on this quotient. So it breaks to uh, sum of representations of every orbit. Okay, and for every S we define uh, this, uh, uh, this virtual representation. And though, I, I mean, I will not uh, go through, I mean, we'll not, uh, don't have time to discuss the proof, but uh, the uh, upshot is that for every piece we can, uh, for every splitting orbit, we can uh, define the dimension of this Whittaker functionals corresponding to orbit O will be just uh, um, a, a number, I mean, the, the product of those characters of these two representations, sigma S, which correspond to pi S, and sigma O, which correspond to O. In particular, when every orbit splits, we, we know that uh, total dimension of the Whittaker functional of pi S is just the product of sigma s with the permutation representation of w. Okay, so that's uh, uh, another uh, similar description, but in quite different, uh, set, I mean, maybe similar setting and similar description, but quite different tools, uh, is the case of unitary unramified series. So if we assume that, um, uh, that uh, chi is a unitary character, Okay, with some mild uh, restriction on the covering or ZT cover of almost simple and simply connected group. Uh, then we know that uh, the decomposition of I of, uh, of the principal series is governed by uh, the R group, okay, which is a billion in, in this case, the chi is unramified. Okay, and every, so there is a certain R group R chi and every constituent corresponds to representation of this R chi. And then the theorem says that in this case, the dimension of uh, Whittaker space uh, of Whittaker functionals corresponding to a given orbit is again given by just a product of uh, sigma and sigma O. Sigma O is still the permutation representation of W, okay, restricted to R of chi. R of chi is naturally sits inside W. Uh, you know, we have to uh, twist. Uh, uh, that uh, by a fixed character of, of R chi, which has to do with, with a modular character. So that's third application. In all this application, it's very, very essential that, that uh, the module uh, uh, VO was projective and hence this home space is uh, exact. Okay, and the last application uh, I'll talk about, it's a recursive relation for spherical Whittaker function. And for this, I will remind first the linear case Okay, so we start with when we, uh, this will be a description of famous castleman shalaika formula. Uh, if G is a linear group so that, uh, such that uh, the dual group is simply connected, okay, we can, can consider a universal unramified series and uh, with a normalized spherical vector, which is CY valued. I remind Y is for character letters. The spherical CY valued function will be just given by the usual formula. I mean, this is a function on G, but it is U invariant on the left and U psi invariant on the left and K invariant on the right. So it's enough to determine the values for T. So, and after mild normalization, uh, there is very, very well known Kasselman shalaika formula. Um, and for it holds that this, uh, uh, if we, uh, that uh, the, uh, value, so elements Ty is an element of the torus uh, corresponding to a co-character uh, uh, Y. Uh, and the, the value of Ty plus rho equals to the value of W at T rho multiplied by the trace uh, corresponding to of the finite dimensional representation Vy here, V has nothing to do with Gelfand graph representation, it is just highest weight representation of the dual group with a uh, uh, dominant character, uh, uh, dominant co-character uh, Y gives rise to the um, uh, uh, dominant uh, weight of the dual side, right? And VY is the corresponding representation. So this is a most compact form of the Kasselman-Shalaika formula for, um, 
uh, linear group. So what would be the, the analog for um, covering groups? I mean, in this case, the general uh, formula is not known yet, but I will uh, give a nice example of uh, uh, what's going on on even covers of SL2, in which case the dual group is still uh, SL2, okay? Uh, so in this case, uh, uh, the character lattice is just one dimensional, right? Can be identified with Z, while Y bar is N Z. Uh, uh, note that we are talking about uh, uh, covering of uh, uh, size two N. Okay, so for any element L, we know very well what is the uh, uh, N plus dimensional uh, representation of the dual group and its character can be written in, in such a way. Okay, we identify uh, an element in, in Y bar, the generator with X in the power N. Okay, and here is a proposition uh, that uh, we have a recursive relation indeed. So, uh, but they are in terms of, uh, so, so if we uh, start with an element uh, K between zero and N, Okay, and uh, then uh, 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 a value of uh, Whittaker functions at the point K plus shifted by an element of the modified lattice L times like T L M, okay, can be uh, written as a sum of two elements, kind of main sum, which we would expect, uh, just note that, uh, look at the, compared to the kasselman shalaika formula in the, uh, linear case, okay? Uh, and yet another error term uh, for uh, uh, involving the value of W at an element T n minus K. Uh, here we have a element uh, uh, as a coefficient, we have Gauss sum appearing. So this takes us out of Z algebras in, in a sense, okay? And know that those uh, TK and TN minus K are actually uh, sit in the same orbit. Uh, so below I write exactly what are W orbits of Y over Y bar, uh, depending on, so there is always trivial orbit uh, zero. And uh, there is, I mean, it should be zero rather one, right? X and the power zero. And, uh, uh, there is an orbit uh, uh, singleton x n over two, depending on whether uh, n is even or odd. So it might not exist, but generally the, all the other orbits are of the form x k x n minus k. So you see that this shifted values of w at k can be expressed as a recursive relation uh, involving the values of Whittaker functions on uh, uh, representative of orbits. Okay, so these are applications of uh, all the story that I uh, told. And here I think I finish.